Salutations everybody, it is Matty here today and let's get into that Assassin's Creed Odyssey Season Pass. So as most of us know at this point in time, there will not be a brand new Assassin's Creed entry come 2019, placing a great deal of importance on the Assassin's Creed Odyssey Season Pass. Not only will it be the content that keeps us coming back, but on top of that, we are so used to annualized entries in this series, constantly keeping us intrigued, but this is what's going to satiate the thirst that's deeply ingrained in some of our souls. So today we'll be going through all the information on the Assassin's Creed Odyssey Season Pass and I'll give my opinions as we go along the way. The following information comes from GameSpot.com so that will be linked in the description down below as always if you'd like to check it out yourself. With no new Assassin's Creed game coming in 2019, Ubisoft will support Assassin's Creed Odyssey with a regular stream of post-launch content. First, the publisher will roll out additional story missions called The Lost Tales of Greece to all players for free. These missions will be released regularly between the game's paid DLC episodes and will feature familiar faces and new characters from the world of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, according to Ubisoft. The first thing I really do like about this season pass, and you'll notice it as we go along here, is they're trying to focus on splitting up the paid content with the free content so that both fan bases are happy with what they're getting. Yes, if you're paying for it, you're gonna get more content, of course, that makes sense. But that the people who maybe don't have the money or don't wanna spend the money right away on the season pass are still gonna get free content such as new missions. In addition to that, all players will be able to take part in daily and weekly contracts and a new epic ship or mercenary will appear each week. Ubisoft will also release a free discovery tour mode like the one added in last year's title, Assassin's Creed Origins, which will allow players to explore the game world and learn more about ancient Greece without taking on any enemies or quests. A new game plus mode and other content drops like new mythical creatures to battle are also in the works. Accompanying this season pass was actually a trailer from Ubisoft explaining it and when they were going through the daily and weekly mercenary and ship missions it reminded me kind of a destiny. They said there's going to be new weapons, new armor in the store and that you acquire currency specially through these missions that come out every week and day and then you can go to this store and get that unique equipment. Putting it in a single player game though is something I didn't quite expect. That was a interesting turn of events to say the least. I'm not against it though as long as these missions don't feel like shoe-ins and are actually creative and fun to come back to as well. The gear is worth it to have me come back. Furthermore, Carrick and I had talked about on the podcast how the discovery mode DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins was game changing man because not only is it really cool but it's good for just outside of gaming. It shows exactly what gaming can become. It's not just about sitting in front of the TV, getting a story, hitting buttons, fighting stuff, whatever. It's actually some place you can learn and immerse yourself in a world that you may not be able to access right at this moment in time. So a chance to actually interact with landmarks and learn about the history of ancient Greece. I think this is wonderful for society actually. Now is there a chance your professor says, everyone go pick up a copy of a Assassin's Creed Odyssey and play the Discovery Tour mode and we'll talk about Greece when we get back on Monday. No, but I just think the idea that it's there and perhaps a professor who is into gaming could take their PS4, their Xbox One, their PC, load up this mode and kind of walk students through some of ancient Greece while combining it with the lesson they already had prepared to just change it up. As someone who is a student, I'm sure many of you out there are as well, Sometimes it's nice just to have a professor who spices things up. Yes, we are often learning some things that may not be super interesting to us, but when we get variety, we see the effort there, it ultimately makes it more intriguing and reels us in. So I think the Discovery Tour mode is something that really needs to be applauded from Ubisoft. Lastly from this section is New Game Plus, which I don't get What's with these games launching without New Game Plus? Spider-Man just did it, which was shocking in its own right because it would look like the type of game that is fun to go back with like your trip mine and play the first set of levels again or something along those lines. Plus it's Insomniac Games who does Ratchet and Clank, which is like New Game Plus 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 Central. So it was really weird that that was an omission. I imagine part of this is because they don't think people are gonna beat it right away, so why do they have to have it available right away, especially when Odyssey is a very long game, but it's just something I'd like to see ready at launch. Which is where I give Tomb Raider a round of applause because that did have New Game Plus at launch. Now it's time for a little bit about the paid content. Those who purchase the Assassin's Creed Odyssey Season Pass, meanwhile, will receive even more content. First Season Pass owners will have access to two major storylines broken up in 
into three episodes apiece. The first arc, called Legacy of the First Blade, will begin this December and will introduce players to the first hero to wield the iconic Hidden Blade. The second story arc, The Fate of Atlantis, kicks off spring 2019 and is centered around the fabled sunken city. Based off those release periods, it sounds like the first episode, as confirmed, is going to drop in December and we're going to get a new episode every month, so January, February, and then March or April is when the next story will start up since they just said spring 2019, so I imagine that's a safe assumption. Now, I have one issue with this part of the paid content, which is mainly the hidden blade aspect. It's a bit of criticism because I feel like the biggest issue people have taken with Odyssey is not that the game looks bad or anything along those lines, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a game about the Assassin's Creed. It looks like it's using its name to sell copies. And while the game I have played it is so much fun, I do understand where folks are coming from. And then when you see DLC paid content at that saying, here's the legacy of the first hidden blade, something that actually has to do with Assassin's Creed, that would make more sense as free content for players to be like, okay, we can all experience what made Odyssey an Assassin's Creed game. Now, we don't know a ton about the main story and how it all ends up and how it actually becomes an Assassin's game because they did say, yes, you'll see why it is. But right now, from the outside looking in, we only know so much about the game, and this isn't a good look in my opinion. However, discovering the fate of Atlantis is that supernatural type of content that has been peppered throughout this entire game, and I really appreciate that. It's a good change of pace between fighting someone like Medusa and then going off and doing serious side quests. It seems to really feed off the energy of what has made this game stick out for so many people who got their hands on it. Now for the last bit. On top of that, players who purchase the season pass will receive two remastered Assassin's Creed games. Assassin's Creed 3 and its previously Vita exclusive spin-off Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. The season pass costs $40 and it is also included in the game's Gold, Ultimate, Spartan, and Pantheon editions. So you're telling me that this season pass gets rid of a game on the Vita. You know, it's hilarious. Like, how does Assassin's Creed Liberation, a game that no one really cared about, get taken off the Vita and put it onto modern consoles, but the Vita's best game, Persona 4 Golden, is one that's just staying home on Vita, that's never been ported to PS4, Xbox One, PC. Blows my freaking mind, man. I don't get it. That's like one game that would sell a lot. Screw that shit. So for $40, you're getting two remasters, six episodes worth of story-based content, and then all of us will be able to experience those free missions, those weekly and daily missions. I like the post-content launch plan for this. However, the remaster stuff worries me a little bit because it's eerily similar to Far Cry 5, where Far Cry 5's base game was all right, in my opinion. And then the DLC, I have not had a chance to play, but I pay attention to the reviews. I talked to Carrick a lot, who has played all of them, and he said, they're not that great. And I've seen, that's kind of the general consensus for all of them. Far Cry 5 also had a similar DLC plan of, ooh, this looks cool, you get to go to Mars, and ooh, a Far Cry 3 remaster as well, which was a classic game. It really kind of set the tone for open world games going forward for many years. So while just because their plans are similar doesn't mean that they're both going to be bad, it just gives you that unsettling feeling like, oh boy, we've seen this story before. I hope it doesn't end the same exact way as well. But I'm pumped, man, because Assassin's Creed 3 is a game that minus the story, okay? But once you become an assassin, you start engaging in the open world activities. I mean, that was easily my favorite Assassin's Creed game. I love the world. Like I said, I love the ship, the homestead. I sunk dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into that game because it was one of those titles that I played, I beat, I was like, mm, whatever. And then I went to a point in time in high school where I didn't have any games to play. So I said, screw it, I'll go back to Assassin's Creed 3 because it was downloaded on my PS3 and I figured why the hell not, I got nothing else to play anyway. And I ended up sinking another like 40 hours into the game just doing fun side content. Yes, sometimes chasing around the feathers and stuff was a pain in the ass, but I'm more so talking about the Homestead stuff. That's where I really enjoyed what Assassin's Creed 3 offered. I think it has some good ideas there, but I don't know how many people were like yearning to play this in Liberation. So I'll be curious to see your feedback on that. 
along with everything you think about this season pass, because that's it, man. So fire away in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.